Welcome to Cinema Chop Shop. Watch. Chop. Retrofit. I, I started watching The Clerks 3 today. I watched it last night. Um, what the fuck is up with Jason Hughes' teeth? They're fronts. They're veneers. His, his teeth got all fucked up because he was on drugs. I know a lot of people who had veneers, mm-hmm. and they just look like shiny teeth. Mm-hmm. But he has them top and bottom. Yeah. He looks there like might a, be false teeth. He looks like a James Bond villain. Jaws. Maybe but, that's what he was going for. But this is not, not a, a Kevin Smith podcast. This is not a Kevin Smith or this James not a, Bond. a View Askew podcast? No. Really? <laughs> Welcome. So I'm not getting paid. <laughs> Welcome to Cinema Chop Shop. This is a movie podcast and pop culture adjacent podcast. We just want to say welcome back, everyone. I am uh, your host, Brewboss Sean, and I'm joined here in the uh, shop with uh, Chelsea the Regulator. Hello. Chelsea may sound a little quieter than normal. Um, She was attacked by a vampire. She does have something on her neck. That's what the revenant's about, right? Yeah. Do you want to tell us about the the, the wound on your neck? Um, no. No. (laughs) Uh, Chelsea had a little bit of surgery. Well... You call it surgery. It was like two puncture wounds. Yeah. Um, about evenly spaced for <laughs> incisors. That's all we should say. And most people like uh, would deny it until the, the very end, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, and now my skin is just glittery. And glittery Shiny. and glowing. Mm-hmm. Yes. And don't look her in the eye. She will captivate you mm-hmm. with her gaze. Yep. Um, and as you may have heard, uh, hail to the king. Welcome back. Uh our founder, our our, our pod father, <laughs> uh, welcome Trav Van Helsing. Yes, <laughs> uh, glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for agreeing to do this uh, episode. I know that you, as well as I, have a certain affinity for Hammer Films. Indeed, I they hold a special place in my heart. Um, I can't say that I've seen all of them, but I've seen quite a few and. They, uh, something about them, it tends to bleed together. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. And, uh, um, I, it was a good, good time to plug our most recent episode, which was an interview with our, uh, internet friend, uh, Dave, also known as Hammer Gothic on, yes. uh, Twitter. The hammer uh, is his penis. Yes. And he was gracious enough to do an interview with us and kind of drop knowledge bombs left and right on, uh, Hammer Films. That's and great. It was a lot of fun. But uh, I agree. Uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of Hammer films mm-hmm. in the last two or three months and yeah, building in up to this. And some of them do bleed together yeah. as well as some of them uh, I will forget I've seen them. Yeah, and that then I'll, happens too. And then I'll say, ja, I need to see that one. It sounds cool. Yeah. And then I'll look it up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was that one. Yeah. But uh, do you think that they reused set pieces? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that Dave talked about in yeah. his interview because of the very small family style uh, production that they were running. Mm-hmm. It was all based in like this one little set, like home area and they're in the in true in a lot of the vampire films uh you'll see there's like one road a dirt road that goes along the side of a lake and they use that set piece over and over and over again i've yeah. seen so many people get like robbed by thieves on that road yeah and so yeah for that point uh they do kind of run together um in, i think in that regards. was kind of the norm in the 1950s though if you were uh a big production house something comes to mind about the original ben hur uh Sel- selznick maybe david o selznick and his set got buried in the desert um, oh yeah, yeah 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 and i think that it was it was pretty common to uh why would you make a new prop why would you make a new set if you already yeah. had one that works just modify it yeah uh, there was a certain amount of cost cutting measures that were taken yeah. and Uh, being practical and frugal in filmmaking at that time. So today we're going to be talking about what I consider to be the, I guess the, the most iconic hammer film. It's not the first. No, not even close. Uh, It's Um, not the first hammer horror. You're right. Had Frankenstein first. They had a a few horror. Frankenstein. Yeah. They had a few horror Mm -hmm. slash sci-fi films as well before that. We prefer to call them sex workers, sex worker, sci-fi films. And, uh, but we're talking about Dracula. Yes. Also known as the horrors, the horrors of Dracula or excuse me, horror of Dracula in the United States. And the reason they did that was because we were only 
a couple decades removed from the Bela Lugosi version, which was just called Dracula, and the American cinemas were worried people would be confused. Yes, and that's uh, that happens a lot with mm-hmm. several uh, of the uh, Hammer films that were produced by um, co-produced by American studios. They would give them a different name, largely because they were competing with other films or there was they were concerned about confusion well it's also titles. like the uh, like the Beatles catalog <laughs> you know you've got all the all the same albums but they're released under different titles in the UK yeah 1958 uh, very uh, easy to watch hour and 22 minute mm-hmm. film uh, gotta love a very economic story yeah but I think that they they managed to fit a lot in to that hour and 20 minutes that's what she said yes Directed by Terrence Fisher, uh, he is a famous Hammer director. Yeah, he's probably the most prolific in that in that realm, right? Yes, absolutely. And I do want to say something about uh, uh, Terrence Fisher uh, regarding the Dracula film, and we'll get into the film, of course, soon. Terrence Fisher said that his greatest contribution to the Dracula myth uh, was to bring out the underlying sexual element mm-hmm. of the story. Yeah, he, they said that um, Christopher Lee's sensuality or sexuality was subversive because uh women wouldn't mind being bitten by a a hunk or whatever that's not an exact quote i'm paraphrasing but but yeah they uh it was a sexy film for its time they also by that point could um involve decolletage yeah you've got some (laughs) cleavage shots yes uh that was quite a bit of that for lucy and mina Uh uh-huh I believe when I watched it most recently, I said, that's some Mina for my Pina. That was, and that's no, a thing nobody said. got upset by that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the cast of the film, of course, Christopher Lee yes. as Dracula, uh, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. And for our younger listeners, we're talking about um, Saramon and Grand Moff Tarkin. Correct. Michael Guff. Michael, I want to say Michael Gao. I don't know if it's right. I feel like we looked this up at some point. Just say Gaga. And Gaga. Be done with it. Michael Gao Gao. Uh, <laughs> modern audiences would know him as Alfred the He's Butler. Alfred. When, he, when he came onto the screen, I was like, Alfred! Yes, he was in the 1989 Batman. <laughs> and my lovely wife, Michelle, was like, shut the fuck up in there. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the 89 Batman. He was in Batman Returns and yes. Batman Forever. Yes. Uh, Carol Marsh, the lovely Carol Marsh, starred as Lucy. And then we had Melissa Stribling as Mina. Mm-hmm. And Which she um, was still a very a very good-looking woman, even though she was a little bit older than the actress playing Lucy. I, I found her kind of classically beautiful. I agree. Um, she was quite attractive. And that is another thing that was in our most recent episode. We talked about the... Um, use of very buxom, beautiful women mm-hmm. in Hammer films, and it was kind of a money maker. Hey, I mean, <laughs> I it's, a, it's a uh, it's a tool. It's a it's a gimmick, and they saw that. Hey, people like that. The film, of course, uh, based on Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm-hmm. Uh, this would be the second film in the proper Dracula story right uh the first of course being 1931's universal production starring bella lugosi Uh famously as dracula um of course we'd be remiss not to mention the 1922 nosferatu with klaus kinski uh no you're thinking of the 70s version oh shit no this is max shrek in the role yes okay so what'd you think of the film i so in the past month i've watched this to varying degrees of attention three times. Okay. The most recently being today. And I think that it earned every bit of the upper 90s percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I think this movie holds up. I think that what's what was a neat juxtaposition for me was the kind of, because it's set in 1887 around there. So we're talking Victorian England. So you've got all of the formality and the pomp of being an English gentleman juxtaposed with the horror of Dracula and the um, the stakes through the heart. Even the opening credits scene where we have the blood splashing on Dracula's coffin is just, I think it's iconic. Chelsea, what did you think of the movie? Mm. 
I feel like I'm not a fair judge. That's just fine. because the last week has been a little drug induced. That's fine. Well, like um uh-uh. like Van Helsing says that the uh the victims of Dracula are consciously opposed to it, but they can't help themselves, much like the addiction to drugs. So you succumb to the allure of the uh, vampire's bite on your neck? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> well, that explains a lot about the last few weeks. So given that, given that caveat, can you give us a, a ballpark? How did you feel about it? Um, I... Uh... I liked it. I remember making fun of some of the stuff in there, but like having fun with it. Yeah. Um, and then I can only think about that stupid Nicolas Cage fucking oh. mess we watched. Vampire's Kiss? Vampire's Kiss. Christ. You loved it, right, Sean? I fucking love Vampire's That was great, Kiss. but that's the only thing I can that's in my head right now. I gotcha. I, I love this movie. Yeah. It's, I think I, when you mentioned you watched it two viewings ago mm-hmm. to me, I said, it's just... A, a flawless movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I had a with very the movie. simple review. I said that Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing are the backbone of Hammer Horror. Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things I really liked about Christopher Lee's portrayal of Dracula, and I guess more of the the makeup and special effects team, when he shifted into his you know full-on fangs in feeding frenzy mode they always gave him these bloodshot eyes right the red contact yeah Yeah. and that was really cool looking and so i have to ask and pardon my ignorance but was this shot in color i think so it's not technicolor yeah i think it was shot in color it seemed very true to life color to me yeah so okay i'm sure we'll be corrected dana if not um (laughs) You know, there are other things about the film that I really liked. I thought the sets were great. Mm-hmm. I thought the costumes were lovely. The the music, uh, which Dave mentioned in the interview. Yeah. Now I cannot unhear it oh, because yeah. he mentioned it. The theme is da da da. It's like Dracula. Yes. And, it, and it's repeated <laughs> so many times. And it's great because once you get that earworm in, in your brain, it's like you're tuned into it. And it definitely uh, really signals that 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 something cool is coming, and it's you know interwoven with that movie beautifully. So I have a question: uh, Did you notice the motto on the family crest above the fireplace, and also on his letterhead? Uh, re- remind me. It was Fidelis a mortem, or et mortem, if you want to be phonetic about it. Fidelis et mortem. Life through death. It means faithful and dead. Ah. Uh oh. That's kind of creepy. Yep. Well, that was on the masthead. (laughs) Can you imagine sending that out to people? (laughs) Oh, look, it's a letter from the weird guy. (laughs) This movie just was huge for Hammer. It puts the stake in the ground, so to speak. That right through the heart. Right through the the heart of the matter. (laughs) And it, it said, you know, because, you know, they had the success with the Frankenstein movie, yep. but this one said, you know, we're going to continue on this path and make a lot of money. So much so that there were multiple iterations of the, the Dracula movies throughout their history, as yep. well as other vampire films. So speaking of multiple iterations, can we list them off? Because I've got that page open in my research. Hit it. So we've got um, Dracula, 1958. The Brides of Dracula, 1960. No Christopher Lee. Right. Uh, then we've got Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Which is essentially the sequel to this yes. movie. Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, 1968. Taste the Blood of Dracula in 1970, as well as Scars of Dracula in 1970. Dracula AD, 1972. Did you watch it? I watched it. It's one of the lowest rated ones of the series on Rotten Tomatoes. I really, I'm really interested. In I really it. liked it yeah. because uh, it is a presentation of, because it was done in 69, right? It, it, uh, 1972. No, I think it was 68, uh, 68 69. And they f- fast forwarded their projection as 1972. Okay. And it was like, um, as Dave said, uh, it's like a bunch of old producers said, hey, this is what the kids are into yeah. and, and we're going to be hip and, and with the hippie movement. And right. and so it 
there's a certain amount of camp factor involved in this movie, but at the same time, there's a lot of really cool shit in this movie too. Uh, I, I liked it and I'm not saying it's a perfect film by any stretch. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Except for that one scene where Peter Sellers is playing the hippie and he's just it's not <laughs> believable. Um, so then you also have the satanic rites of Dracula in nineteen seventy. I love this one. I love that movie. This is a film where uh, Dracula plays. It's not even revealed until towards the end of the film. He is a CEO of a, of a, of a corporation and he is engineering the reintroduction of the bubonic plague. Oh, wow. And he's tapped, unbeknownst to them, his vice presidents as his four horsemen of the apocalypse, and he's going to give them the bubonic plague, and they're going to spread it out across the world. Just like those wrestlers from the 1980s. And, of course, Peter Cushing is uh, later on, a, I guess, a descendant of Van Helsing in this movie. Okay. And it's cool. It could be better. It could be a lot better. But I liked it enough to say, you know what? There's, there's meat to this bone and it could be made into a modern day film using the themes of a very underhanded, untrustworthy corporate CEO that you don't know who he is until the end. It, and it, there, there are certain elements of like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk mm -hmm. in this movie. And I think that, uh, I think there's some truth to it. Sometimes I forget those two are not the same person. I know. Right. <laughs> And then finally, 1974, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which is a clear money grab taking advantage of the kung fu craze in the 1970s. Now, Christopher Lee's not in this one. Peter, not, Peter, Peter Cushing, Cushing is. is yes. And that one is uh, off the rails crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a wild ride. Uh, I recommend checking it out just for the, the sheer nuttiness of this movie. So let me ask you this. At the end of Dracula proper, or the horror of Dracula, it's pretty clear that Dracula is destroyed by the sunlight. He deteriorates, he turns to dust, the dust blows away. Having not seen Dracula, Prince of Darkness, how does he rematerialize? I can't remember which movie it was but it seems like this happens a lot they there's like a, a retinue uh, a renfrew type character renfro that, that has renfro that has uh dracula's ashes and he puts them in like a receptacle or a, a coffin and then he bleeds on it that or he finds a sacrifice to, to bleed into it and then it kind of bubbles and and mm -hmm like rehydrates <laughs> and turns into Dracula. So, uh, yeah, he, he keeps coming back. He's, he's rather resilient that, uh, Christopher Lee. It's dehydrated Dracula. Just add blood. Yeah, exactly. They sell it at the grocery store. You right should try on. some. All right. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Yeah. So Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing played a huge significant role, uh, with hammer, as you said, uh, not only in the Dracula series, but also um, they were in the, the Frankenstein movie. Mm -hmm. I think Peter Cushing uh, recurs as the Frankenstein mm -hmm. character. Um, He's the doctor, the mad scientist. They both they both pop up in other films. Um, I highly recommend checking out the uh, uh, above ab abominable snowman. The abominable bubble. Uh, the abominable snowman, starring. Uh, Peter Cushing. It's one of their early films. Okay. It's black and white. And I like it because it's very much a psychological horror movie versus a, a monster movie. There are monsters involved, but it's uh, really more about isolation, madness. And, and it's, it's a cool flick. But anyway, the two of those guys, um, without them, I don't know what hammer films is or would, would have been. Yeah, uh, you probably end up with Peter Sellers in there. Oh, God. <laughs> <Pretending> <laughs> to be a Just keep him away. But, uh, yeah, the, the, you cannot under underestimate uh, this. just the significance of those two. Yeah, they carried a lot of weight. Now, here's some cool stuff about the two of these guys. Their birthdays were one day apart. Same year? Separated by nine years. Okay. But they did share kind of a, a one day. Wait, Chelsea, which one do you think is older? Mm, I don't know. Take a guess. I don't know. Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee? Peter Cushing. I think it's Peter Cushing. It's as Peter well. Cushing. Yes. yes. Uh, their first movie together. Would you care to wager a guess? Their first movie together. Was it a Hammer film? No. Mm -mm. 
then I do not know. Dave told us this, didn't he? I don't know. Did he? I seem to remember. Their first ha- their first film together was Hamlet in ah. 1948. Uh, with Sir Lawrence Olivier. Yes. Um, however, they never met because they were not in scenes together. They were just in the film together. Their their first meetup was Curse of Frankenstein. Gotcha. Okay. So they were filming separately in the movie. They were they never appeared on screen together. Right. Okay. Uh, now, in the Curse of Frankenstein, Christopher Lee was upset that the monster had no lines. He was a little pissed. Yeah. All right. So he shows up to set and, you know, Cushing's in his trailer. And here's the quote from Christopher Lee. Peter looked up, his mouth twitched, and he said dryly, you're lucky I've read the script. (laughs) (laughs) I will say that the Frankenstein makeup on Christopher Lee in this one is not the best. Um, I'm on the fence about it. Okay. I admire what they were trying to do, Mm -hmm. trying to make it look more... Almost like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like DK. Yeah, yeah, like like this patchwork man. Yes. Um, I, I I liked what they were trying to do. I think there's something lost in the execution. But it's uh, no Robert De Niro. I'll tell you that much. But yeah, uh, but from their first meeting after that moment, they were pretty much friends for life. Yeah, ride or die. Just um, like Sir Patrick Stewart and Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. Uh, these guys did 22 films together. Jeez Louise. And that's not including films with flashbacks to other films or like archival footage or scenes that were cut. Correct. Um, now, here's some trivia stuff that's kind of yes. fun for you. And yes. this, these aren't trivia questions, but just anecdotes. The two were asked to leave a theater because they were laughing too loudly at a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, they're called Looney Tunes. Can you imagine right? how loud do you have to be to be asked to leave from a comedy film? <laughs> Oh, so interesting point. Uh, Looney is slang for lunatic, and the word lunatic means somebody who goes crazy during the full moon. Interesting. All right, here's a real trivia question. Both Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing were offered a role in a very famous horror film shot in the late 70s. Do you know what that that role would be? Or the horror film? Okay, so I bet it was Dr. Loomis in the original Halloween. You're absolutely right. Oh, boom, wow. boom! I had oh. no idea what you were going to ask. Um, and then I guess the other thing is, what famous film franchise has featured both Christopher Lee and Peter Star Cushing? Star Wars. Star Wars. Count Doku and Grand Moff Tarkin. Very good. You're on your game. I can see that the time away from the chop shop has not hindered your mental prowess. No, I mean, it's probably just this beer. It's really lubricating the brain cells. Oh, yeah. I guess we should mention we do kind of a beer check-in. Since beer check-in. Chelsea's on top of those. Uh, this is, Every day. This is Graveyard Shift. Mm-hmm. This is a beer from Westbrook Brewing down in uh, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And can you describe the artwork for us? It's pretty cool. It's by a guy. Um, <laughs> he gives himself the name Kyle Rage. Is the name of the artist, mm-hmm. and it's a, a gloved hand belonging to Fred. Yes, Fred. A mm-hmm. mask belonging to Michael or Mike. A mask belonging to Jason, and then a chainsaw belonging to Junior. So I guess these are the uh, icons of. Uh, these are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so I, I told you earlier, I think off mic, that just today in the car, I bet you there's someone, someone out there who's so into horror movies and so into Halloween and they had four boys and they named them Fred, Michael, Jason, and then junior. I think it's very possible. Uh, this is a double dry hopped IPA 7% with Citra Fantastic. and Citra incognito. I don't know what Citra incognito is. It's Citra in disguise. Well, yeah, that's what the name <laughs> would imply. So why would they call it Citra Incognito? It's wearing a uh, mustache and glasses. I know. Do you think they'd call it Metra? <laughs> um, where does this come from? I said Westbrook down in uh, okay, yeah. Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Yeah, Ooh. it's a tasty treat there. It really is. So I think that it was um, kind of a ballsy undertaking on the part of Hammer to pick up these characters and be like, hey, we're going to do our own... Because Universal had already established themselves as these are these are our characters. This is you know your Lon Chaney, your fucking Boris Karloff, your Bella Lugosi, and then Hammer comes out of nowhere. They're like, well, it's a new era, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I th- 
I agree with you. They had to have pretty big balls. And I think that uh, their productions, even though they were set in various times, I think they all kind of carried the uh, the earmark that is like these films were of the 60s and of yep. the 70s. Mm-hmm. Somehow, it's like even though you know clearly set and costumed uh, in, in in other eras, mm-hmm. just I just you can't escape it. That's you know, another thing that I really liked about this particular film was the costuming. I thought the costumes were great in this. They yeah. were they were they were subtly sexy. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, because they had to be subtle. Um, I would recommend watching, and it's another vampire film, but it's not a Dracula film, and that would be uh, Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a it's a Hammer film. It's uh, the Vampire Lovers. The oh, Vampire God. Lovers. It's a lesbian oh, yeah. vampire uh, <laughs> story involving a uh, a timeless vampire and her, uh, I guess she's just kind of going mad on a couple of gals. And uh, I think that there also is kind of like an implied lesbianism with the brides of Dracula. Yes, I, I think, think that's true. Yeah. Very much. And that is... At least I like to think so. Well, watch this one because they, they kind of out and out say it i mean it's okay. uh, undeniable and uh there's some very suggestive camera work in that one a lot, a lot of, of upskirt well not <laughs> no not upskirt necessarily but like a lot of the vampire going down off camera mm. kind of stuff so to speak <clears throat> yeah and you know okay that's what's going on there oh I'm 100% on board with this movie yeah you should check it out i, I thought it was fun chelsea you saw this one yeah is this the... That's the girl who had the, the, the really straw-like hair. You, she needed conditioner. Oh, and she... Okay, yeah, yeah. She looked like a scarecrow. Kind of. She she was like a... She looked really old. It was her hair. Yeah. Because she was not terribly old. No, but she just looked yeah, old. Yeah, the hair needed some help, uh, but everything <laughs> else was, was pretty uh, fun to look at. So is it time for us to uh, go to the lobby and get ourselves some B... Some sledgehammers. Some B negative. <laughs> yes. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves some steaks. Medium rare. <laughs> nice. This is the story of Dracula, a creature who destroys all whom he touches. Dracula the terrifying, the feared who sleeps in the tombs of the dead by day and arises at night to inflict his terror upon the innocent and the unsuspecting. You must help me. You must. You're my only hope. You must. I'll help you. I promise. Please try and understand. This is not Lucy, the sister you loved. It's only a shell, possessed and corrupted by the evil of Dracula. How do you destroy a fiend who has so far proven himself indestructible? Those who come to end his reign of terror stay to become his victims. Castle Dracula is summoned here in Klausenburg. Will you tell me how I get there? You ordered a meal, sir. As an innkeeper, it's my duty to serve you. When you've eaten, I ask you to go and leave us in peace. This is the doctor who dares to challenge the vampire Dracula. This is the anguished man who fears for the lives of his beloved, the girl who is his sister, and the one that is his wife. Dracula, the bedeviled master of all that is evil. So we went out last night, we went to Hefe. I had the spider roll. Yeah. They do a really good job on that role. They do a great job on all their roles. So obviously they're the best sushi in town. Yeah. But there was these people sitting down at the end of the bar who were so fucking pretentious. They were like, yeah, this is really good sushi. And we've had sushi all over the planet. The planet. It said planet. <laughs> I was like, all right, bud. <laughs> I didn't say shit to him, but I was like, you guys. And this is coming from somebody who's very pretentious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Well, we're back from uh, the break. Are we back? We're back. I've been rolling. Mm -hmm. So let's just do some uh, movie marathon catch-ups. And if you've you've seen any vampire films, 
That's <laughs> extra bonus points. You get extra bonus points. So far, Travis is winning, Chelsea. So you need to really catch up. <clears throat> I, I mean, it's fine. I'm not going to win. What am I winning at? Uh, there's there's a prize. Oh, the trivia. There's just a prize, yeah. Do you have more trivia questions? No, I don't. Okay. But, you know, Chelsea can catch up if she's seen some vampire films. She hasn't. Where are you at on the movie Marathon? 202, my friend. Oh, God. I am not going to hit 365 ah. unless I watch 60 movies a month for the next. Oh, that's double. That's doubling <laughs> up. Uh, I'm, I'm on the home stretch. I'm at 340. All right, so what was the I don't m- keep track. I don't want to know what the best movie you saw recently was. I want to know what the most recent movie you saw was. Oh, shit. Uh, like I said, I've been watching a lot of Hammer films. I got the uh, Hammer Columbia Blu-ray collection. Yes. So I watched uh, The Pirates of Blood River. Pirates of Blood River. So this has to be an early one. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, let me. I'll give you the date on that one. It's a obviously a pirate film. It's because once they tapped into horror, they kind of stuck with. Yeah, yeah. It, this right? was from 1962, so they were kind of okay. still making some of these other films. But uh, I think this movie should be called uh, Daddy Issues of Blood River. Um, it starts out with this young man living in like a like a uh, I guess they're in the Caribbean. Like you know, they've escaped religious mm-hmm. persecution and they've started this colony inland on this island and he's out canoodling with this girl and it very quickly becomes apparent that the girls what do you mean by that well they're gonna they're gonna do it make what's pasta? it they're gonna they're gonna, gonna make pasta they're gonna make sexy times and oh, tortellini yeah and the uh <laughs> the girl is still married but they're having this tryst and they're discovered in the woods and their guys like, I told you, I told you that they were you know, fornicating or whatever. Mm-hmm. They bring them back to the tribunal where they have a trial. And it turns out that the guy's father is on the tribunal Uh-oh. and the girl's father's on the tribunal. This is some kind of monkey court. So he's like, you should recuse yourself. Yeah. No. And so they sentenced the guy to 15 years in the penal work colony and and then, not, it's not the same thing you think penal work colony means, Chelsea. <laughs> okay. And, and thank you. And the whole movie is all about like like him, his father, the grandfather who founded the colony. It's ridiculous. And Christopher Lee plays the the lead pirate. The pirates are never shown on a ship. That's a cost saving measure. They're just suddenly inland. They're on foot. They're, we're just pirates because we dress that way and we talk like pirates, matey. If they wore assless chaps, they'd be butt pirates. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, uh, it it wasn't that... I didn't really care for it that much. Uh, that's the most recent one I saw. Okay, my most recent movie that I saw was Clerks 3. Clerks 3. That's what we led the show off talking about. Did we already talk about that? Well, I mentioned, I mentioned Jason Mewes's, uh, you know... That's yeah. right. T- Weird. James um, Bond teeth. The most recent movie I checked in was a Lifetime film called The Gabby Petito Story. <laughs> oh, my. It's a um, kind of a documentary about the events that happened t- during their road trip. I will say that the casting was spot on, especially Brian Laundrie. Dude looked just like him. And they had archival footage like in the credits, mm-hmm. and I couldn't tell the difference. It was crazy. And now I also call small white conversion vans Petito Specials. Nice. (laughs) Uh, Chelsea, do you want to talk about a movie? Yeah, I guess the most recent one I saw was Deadstream. Yes! Okay, so I, I think I was aware of a group text about this. I did not reply because I didn't know what the hell you guys were talking about. Yes. What is Deadstream? It's a new Shutter film. Okay. And Chelsea, take it away. Um, it's... It's just a fucking masterpiece. This guy um, is a YouTuber, I guess, or uh-huh. content creator. And it's just this whole commentary on that sort of culture. But they do it in this... I don't know. You're better at explaining it's, this. It's, it's POV. Like, he's got okay. the... He's, yeah. He's, like, equipped in, like, multiple GoPro cameras. And he's going to investigate a supposedly haunted, haunted house. house. And so he's setting up the whole thing with all these cameras. He's giving them all names. And... If you watch any of the YouTube type regulars, this rings so true because it's all about that. Got to get those likes, smash that bell. And I, oh, don't demonetize me for swearing. I'm so sorry. I mean, is this what uh, prompted you to send me that message about how if we were smart, we would make a door camera horror movie? No. 
That's <laughs> not. We were just happened to be watching some door cam, like ring cam footage. And what I, were my um, What were my suggestions? Oh God, let me go back. <laughs> uh, one is <laughs> Chelsea talk about this paranormal movie. <laughs> activity front yard. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> the ring camera. Oh, oh, that's good. And then there's one more. Oh, empty nest. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. He remembered every single one of them. Uh, yeah, these. Uh, the, it, it's a good flick. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because it was you know tongue in cheek, funny. It was self deprecating, and there are a lot of moments where they're just it's full on outrageous. Where you're just like, what the fuck? And you're yelling at the TV screen. Um, there's some cool, fun stuff. It, in it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> at first, you don't like the, ho- the the main character. And I think by the end, you kind of sort of like him. Yeah. It's just he's it's, it's, it's perfect casting. It's like if you met one of these YouTubers in person, you'd be like, you know, you're not the dick you appear to be on, on, t- on YouTube. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not the dick I appear to be on this podcast. <laughs> I can I can attest to that. So, um what is the most recent horror movie that you saw, Chelsea, besides that one? Uh, let's see. I'm just going to say mine. It was Halloween Ends. Oh, don't, don't spoil it. I was I'm about not to gonna, it. I'm not going to spoil it. All I'll say is that it was... There was parts that I really liked, and there was parts where I was like, really? Was it better than Halloween Kills? Kills. Yes. Because Halloween Kills was terrible. Yeah, it's better than that, and it's on a par with the first uh, reboot Halloween, I think. Um, there are some great vampire flicks on Criterion right now. Yes. As well as 80s horror films, as well as the Universal horror films. I watched The Lair of the White Worm. The Lair of the White Worm. Starring Peter Capaldi and Hugh Grant. And uh, What? Yeah. It's... Doctor Who and... and... Mr. Kerfuffle, <laughs> flabbergasted and embarrassed, and uh, the yeah. man who went up a hill and came down a mountain. Uh, it's in the, it's like 1989, maybe. You're at the height of big shoulder pads at that era. Um, off the rails, crazy, psychosexual, phallic imagery, uh, very terrifying vampire makeup. The dialogue is sexually loaded, and it's a little campy. Uh, Peter Capaldi has long curly hair in this movie. Um, it's mm. cool. It's in it. Uh, yeah, I never would have. His real hair. Uh, yeah, I think so. I saw. Uh, okay, this is the the best action movie I've seen recently. Bullet Train. Did you guys watch Bullet Train? Oh, is that the Brad Pitt? Yes. I've not. It I'm feels not. like a Guy Ritchie movie, but for now, without missing a beat. Okay. It's good. Um, Chelsea, you've seen a little horror flick recently. Werewolf by Night. Oh, Was yeah. It called Blonde. Werewolf Lift by, by night. night. This is from the Marvel Peoples. Yes, yes. Okay, I thought that I was I just want TV a man show. thing. It's a Disney Plus special presentation. It's like the old ABC specials yeah. or CBS specials. The more you know. 52 minutes. It counts as a That's movie. Great. Yeah, I mean, I want my own man thing. as a movie. It is directed by uh, Michael Giacchino. Myers. Giacchino, Giacchino. He, you would know Giacomo. him. You would know him as the famous composer for like all the Pixar movies. And uh, this is his first. Don't uh, tell me what I would know. Yeah, I know what you know. <laughs> his first directorial film. Um, it's like a tribute to the Universal monster movies. Right on. Okay, a little off topic, but I was on your Twitter. Yeah, because you check in. A lot of the movies I watch. <laughs> Look at this promoted tweet. Look what the picture is. What? Once again. Oh my isn't... god! Isn't that fucked? Oh my god! Audio isn't that medium. fucking creepy? Uh, I wish this was a video okay. medium. One of the photoshops we did when we did the Around the World in a Month uh, films. Yep. We did a photoshop involving a very fat, uh, a very fat white American family. <clears throat> was I the fat one, or were you? The fat I one? think I was the fat one. They were all fat. One of one of us was the children. Uh, the I, children. Was the, I was the child. One of us was the child, and it was Chelsea. Um, I think I was the mother. I always, d- yeah. I always do the mom. You were the the fat dad, and My I dad. and I would just I would just place them over like El the, Padre Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> I would just place them in front of various landmarks around the world, and right there. And Chelsea was just served an ad for uh, I don't know who it was for, but it used the original source photo 
yeah, from our in front Photoshop. Of fucking Mount Rushmore. Wow. We're fucking famous, dude. South Dakota. They know you're from South Dakota. Ew. Um, I saw the original of Invisible Man. Oh, the original Invisible Man. Very cool movie. Um, special effects that will still blow your mind. Yeah. But like, how did they do that back then? He, ask any professional special effects artist, and they will still just get blown away at the use of mirrors. Yeah. And, and just how did they do it? That's how they did the speeders in Star Wars was mirrors. Yes. To make it look like they were floating above the ground. The thing I loved about this movie, the main character is just a bastard from start to finish. He's mean. He's evil. He's bad. Well, it's not his fault that his parents weren't married when he was born. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chelsea, you said that there was another horror movie that's that we saw recently. On Criterion, the the Iron Man thing. Tetsuo. Yeah. Oh my God. Tetsuo, the Iron Man. Is this a Japanese film? Yeah, very much yes. so. It's um, fucking cool. Nineteen eighty nine, black and white, industrial stop motion animation, Hell live yeah. footage. It's about a man who starts replacing parts of his body with metal. And uh, has a very eraser head kind of aesthetic. Oh, well, then now you lost me. Um, it's really cool. <laughs> Sorry, Knowles. It's cool, and it's very short. It's a very brief film. I think you'll like it. Do you want me to do another one? Yeah, do another one. Did you guys watch The Monsters? No, no. not yet. <laughs> Tell us all. Uh, this, is my, this is my review. I didn't want to, but I did. Who is this for? It looks like it was shot in Rob's backyard. <laughs> and edited with iMovie. Yeah, it it was not great. Like some people love it. I know I know some people who watch it three times in a row. Maybe there were hallucinogenics involved, maybe not. Oh, man. I think there are probably a lot of people who say they like it because they want to be contrarian. They so the the main character, Herman Munster, um he's supposed to be like a bad comedian and I'm a pretty bad comedian <laughs> and he grinds my gears. <laughs> yeah. I saw the horror movie blonde. Yeah. That horror movie. That um, oh, horrible movie. Uh, that's what I meant to that's say. That's what you meant to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my critique of that was that, um, Ana de Armas's actual accent, her Spanish accent comes through a couple of times and then also, how do you do the makeup for somebody who's crying all the time? <laughs> <laughs> um, there were some really terrible directing choices in this movie. When Bobby Cannavale comes in playing Joe DiMaggio yeah. and he's like going up the stairs, there's literally a fucking GoPro attached rig where it's pointing at his head. You and it's she it? Well, no, but you, it's clearly a GoPro because oh, okay. he's running up the stairs and it's doing exactly like a GoPro does where oh, okay. it follows the action. I didn't notice. It was awful. There's some terrible, terrible choices. I did choices. think he was a good choice to play DiMaggio. Oh, yeah. Though. Yeah, I thought, he was, I thought he was great. But uh, for me, the directing was the worst part of this film. Gotcha. It was, and, and, and the story, too, I, having not read the Joyce Carol Oates book, it just bleak. Yeah, it was sad. Just, ugh. No, there's mm -hmm. not, nothing redeeming about it, in my opinion. I so gave did it you, 10 minutes of my life. And did then you, um, it was it was kind of a subdued scene or a, a subtle scene, I guess, where basically the Secret Service forced her to have an abortion of JFK's baby. Yeah. That was sad. Yeah, a lot of sadness. There was also some blowback from that about people saying that the movie was anti-abortion uh, i don't know about anti because, it, because mean, it was scary for her well abortions are scary yeah i mean that's true but it, that should not be your takeaway from this movie no so do you think that michelle williams played a better marilyn monroe i don't know my I, week I don't know if I, I, don't, I don't think i saw hers um, I, you know, I'm not, I've never been really fascinated with Marilyn Monroe. What about Madonna playing breath of breathless Mahoney <laughs> and Dick Tracy? Um, I do like Marilyn Monroe's work. I just don't really find her personal life to be that interesting to me. We talked about vampires kiss. Vampires kiss was fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. This weird cage Keanu Reeves, Lorne Michaels accent that he uses throughout the whole movie was really bizarre. <laughs> just it was so funny. I couldn't. So quit. if you could just tighten it up a little bit, I just couldn't quit laughing. Uh, and I found that this was very much like American Psycho. 
Yeah, you said that it would be a good companion. Yeah, piece, because right? in both films, you're like, did it happen or did it not happen? And so is this your midnight double feature? <laughs> I would definitely make that a midnight double feature. That would be a fun one. Uh, although he's not a vampire in American Psycho, but he does kind of off of life. He's kind of, yeah, kind of a vampire. He sucks. <clears throat> um, yeah, a lot of hammer in my, uh, in my uh, viewing history here. It's pretty sad, man. I've been just loading up on the hammer. Um, there was a movie with Justin Long, Mm -hmm. not, not the big one that everyone's talking about, the, um, not the really good horror movie. Um, this one stars him and, um, so he's, it's not barbarian, not barbarian, not clerks three. It's house of darkness, house of darkness. I saw this on, uh, a release or something. Yeah. It stars him and Kate Bosworth. Bosworth, which I think Kate Bosworth's pleasant, but I don't think she's very good. Yeah, she's kind of. It's it's weird how famous she is. So this is based a, on the work that she's done. This is a very dialogue heavy, slow burn type movie, but the dialogue's really bad. He picks up this girl at a bar, and she asks him to give give her a ride home. She invites him in, and they proceed to have about an hour's worth of dialogue. Some of it's flirty, some of it's not. It's not interesting in the least. And then then it's revealed that her sister also lives in the house. And it's a very big house. And, well, her main character, the main character, her name is Mina Murray. Mina. And her sister's name is Lucy. Nuh-uh. So do you think they might be vampires? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they are. Yeah. This guy was too stupid to realize that. I made the connection pretty early on. I was like, oh, these are vampires. But uh, not a good film. Speaking of Halloween... Have you guys thought about your costumes? Yeah. Yes. Obviously, Chelsea's going to be the headless horseman. Obviously. I have no fucking clue what to do. I was thinking yesterday, it's a bad idea, but I was thinking I could be uh, Michael Douglas from Falling Down. <laughs> Just That's get some great. Get some horn rim glasses. <laughs> and a white short sleeve shirt. Yes. With a briefcase. Dude, I thought about it. That's one of my favorite movies. It's good. It's it's kind of controversial these days. I guess so, yeah, but it was even then uh, directed by uh, Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. So yeah, that's that's the movie marathon, man. I've been I've been watching a shit ton of movies lately. What number are you on? Uh three forty. Three forty. You're gonna hit it. Yeah, I mean it's 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 inevitable. You're gonna go over. Unless I go tits up tomorrow. I mean, yeah. And by tits up. Unless you die, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I mean, it's we're in a whole. I mean, there's other dark. there's other ways to go tits up. <laughs> <laughs> you just show them to people. <laughs> what's up, tits up? Hey, what's up, Sean? Tits up. <laughs> <laughs> I would say solid recommendation to check out. Horror of Dracula, a.k.a. Dracula. Absolutely. And really, in during this Halloween season, any of the Hammer films. Yeah, and that's something that uh, we talked about at, during Dave's interview, is that because Hammer worked with so many different studios, it is very difficult to find one source for Hammer films in America. In, in England, there, there are several... Uh, streaming services that show Hammer, but around here exclusively, yeah, around here not so much. And Hammer uh, Plus, uh, you can see the uh, the TV series that Hammer did in the eighties on Shutter. Was it called House of Hammer? Uh, Hammer House of Horror, I think. Mm. Not House of Hammer. That's the Army Hammer documentary. Oh yeah, Armand. But uh, you can't. And I'm not a big fan of this, but you can find some Hammer films on YouTube for free. In a way, Army Hammer is a vampire. Because he eats girls' feet. Yeah, yeah. It's no small feat. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Travis, we've missed you. (laughs) Yeah, I recommend it. Chelsea probably is not so much on the same wavelength as us. I mean, even beyond the Dracula film series. Like, I I think I uh, downloaded a list or, or... clicked on a list on imdb and there's like close to a hundred hammer films well that's the cool thing about hammer uh, is that there is something for everyone um from film noir to sci-fi to suspense to mystery to horror 
Um, they've done it all. Mm-hmm. And and, they, and several of them are very, very good. Some of them not so great, but th- there's something for everybody in their catalog. Did you watch the X trilogy? Yes. Um, I, know I did you, as well. Uh, you didn't really care for it too terribly much. I liked the two ones with the the dude. The one in the middle wasn't as good. Yeah, yeah Quatermass. Yes. Uh, I, I liked it because he was smart. I think he should have just been called Quartermass. I, why did they switch the <laughs> switch the left? There's a story there. Waiter mass. Uh, but I did I did like the uh, the, the 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 intelligence behind mm-hmm. all of those it, it, because obviously they couldn't make the special effects do what they wanted. It, it was a to paranormal do. detective. Yeah, it was very much an X Files kind of thing. Yes. So there's some cool stuff there. Uh, check them out. Uh, I can't. The X Files. <laughs> X the unknown. Yeah. I wonder if that had something to do with that. It's possible. We'll get we'll get Chris Carter on the show. Yeah, well, I mean, him. his schedule's pretty busy, but I have a line in, so. Well, that's good. There's a lot of people named Chris Carter, though. I might not have the right one. Oh, you got a different one? <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing enough praises of Hammer. Hammer's great. Yeah. I mean, this is one that we've wanted to do for a long time. And it's perfect for this time of year. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the, the, the horror catalog of hammer is so good and again even if you've got kids around i mean there mm-hmm. are some horror films that they're even you know kids appropriate these aren't gory no no they, not not by today's standards because at least. it's late 50s early 60s going into the 70s there were still uh standards you know well um, that was the thing is they were going for that x rating in England at the they time were trying to, and they it. achieved it. They achieved it several times, but again, by today's standards, that's tomato sauce. Right. You know, it's not blood, it's tomato sauce and it's not on camera gore. It's the fallout from what happened off camera. So there's a lot of, uh, things that, that at the time were, were scandalous, but by today's standards, I think that, uh, if you want to show a kid a pretty good, you know, solid horror movie, Pick like a, a foundation. Yeah, yes. pick out a Hammer film. I mean, there's there's lots to be I said would, for it. I would even go so far as to say, do the Universal Bunch first. Yeah. Then do this, and then do your modern ones. The modern ones are not as good. Yeah, they have their place. Um, I mean, your your Jasons, your Freddies, your. No, I was saying like, oh, like the, even modern, modern. So, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, oh, gotcha. Wolf. Um, Robert De Niro, Frankenstein, directed by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, they're not nearly as good as these older movies. Not as good as the sparkly vampires either. I mean, that's a completely different ball game. <laughs> Shut your <them> mouth. <laughs> completely different ball game. <laughs> okay, I think that uh, I think we've exhausted this uh, this topic. Um, I want to thank my co-host mm-hmm. Chelsea, the regulator. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being a trooper. And and attempting to do the show despite your uh, setbacks. I think it was more than an attempt. I think she did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think you deserve some applause and some acclaim. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, despite your vampire attack on your neck, Travis, always a pleasure to have you well, on the you, show. Well, thank you, sir. I do appreciate that. Uh, we, we, we should do this more often. Yeah, I um, my five, five availability years. is pretty scarce because <laughs> five years wasn't enough. <laughs> um, anybody got any plugs? I want to plug the caverns in Pelham, Tennessee. Okay, uh, it's the cave system where they used to do bluegrass underground on ETV and PBS, and they've recently upgraded it with an outside venue and campgrounds and everything. Uh, my lovely wife Michelle drink and I uh, went to cave fest there recently and that was great also our good friend Brian Holt has opened a bar in downtown Florence called crew wine and tap and they have good beer there too excellent it's right next to Victor's Does, he doesn't serve food as far as I oh wait they might they might have started serving food okay Yes. All right. Yeah, I, I knew it was a long time coming. I'm glad to see that Brian is achieving his dream. Yep. So good for him. I hope he does very well. It looks good on him. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. Uh, Chelsea, any plugs? No. 
she plugs um, arthroscopic surgery. <laughs> I also want to uh, to to thank um, again. I, I referenced Dave in the previous episode. Dave was just fantastic in terms of uh, Dave. What? I don't give his last name, mm. but what's it, his Twitter Hammer name? Gothic on Hammer Twitter. Gothic Dave yeah. Hammer Gothic. Uh, thank him again. It just could not have been a, a better guest. Uh, he's probably number number two to you. Of all time? Of all time. You're the best guest. I'm okay. kidding. Oh, no, man. Dave was fantastic. I, I, I kid. Uh, but, uh, and I also want to thank any newcomers who have checked out the show this week. Uh, I think we drummed up some support from some people over uh, over the pond. Across the pond. Yeah. So uh, thank you for joining us, and I hope, we'll, hope you'll stick with us. I And the, that is the home of Hammer. Yes. Uh our next episode's coming up in a couple of weeks. It is going to be a watch party. Watch party! And I will go ahead and drop the bomb. It is going to be Twins of Evil. I refuse to watch it beforehand. Okay. It's uh, going to be all hot takes. Good. I, I think that you'll enjoy this one. It is campy. Yes. It is sexy. You guys are going to love it. It's, yeah. one of, it's one of my favorite Hammer films. Um, so yeah, please uh, join us. And if you have a copy of that film... Uh, keep it handy and watch it with us. Watch it along with us, guys. Yeah. We'll we'll cue it up at whatever the title card is or whatever. Mm-hmm. I've got my um, my headphones in working order. Chelsea has new headphones. I know. I just oh, got new ones. What kind? I don't know. They're awesome. They're awesome brand. Awesome brand headphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, please, uh, anybody who hasn't done so before, check us out on social media. We are Cinema Chop Shop on all the socials. We are also Cinema Chop Shop Podcast on YouTube, so you can watch an audio presentation of our show, which is weird. Um, I was looking around for the don't camera. Don't be so judgmental. Well, it's just strange, but it, it, it exists, and if you want to check it out, please do. But also, uh, we invite you to please like, share, rate, and review the podcast, and uh, keep us going. Uh, give us that... Uh, a claim that we need to feed you know our egos. Also, you know what also exists? Somewhere in these United States, there's a judge. Maybe he's a circuit judge. Maybe he's a federal judge. But his last name is Mental. And he is judgmental. judgmental. That was good. And? <laughs> With that, we're going to leave you now. And please uh, remember to watch, watch Chop Retrofit. Retrofit.